Welcome to Backstage with Richard Ridge, the Central Theatre Group's new production of Marsha Norman and Lucy Simon's beloved musical, The Secret Garden, which has been beautifully reimagined by director-choreographer Warren Carlyle and starring Sierra Boggess, is currently playing at the Amundsen Theatre now through March 26th. And joining me are Sierra and Warren, who have given us so many magical and memorable moments in the theater, and they mean the world to me. Welcome, you two. <laughs> Hi. That was the best intro ever. Best ever. Best ever. We love you very much. We're so happy to be here. I'm so excited. It looks like we're in the same room, just in a different corner, right? Yeah, just full yeah. showbiz. Your showbiz New York and our showbiz LA. So are you in the green room at the Amundsen? Where are you two right now? Yeah, we're in the, we're in the green room. We're, we're steps, steps from the stage. Okay, so it's so wonderful first to be catching up with the two of you. You have just started performances this week. How magical have these first performances been with The Secret Garden? Sierra. Okay. <laughs> because <laughs> I want to know how magical it is when Warren's watching it. But for us, first of all, this company is extraordinary. And getting to finally get this thing on stage that we have been, I mean, five, working on five for years. years. Five, five years we've been dreaming about it. Five, five whole years. So then finally on Sunday when we got our first audience, my heart was pounding so much. I didn't even have to do vibrato. It just did it for me. It was like, a, it was just like, just, it, it was the most magical, magical experience. And now I'm loving this week. We're in previews and we are back to work during the day. And then we are performing at night and I just feel more and more grounded each time because the first performance, honestly, for me was just, I can't believe that the world is getting to see this. Yeah, it's really special. You know, for me, Richie, it's like it's like an out of body experience because you have this thing in your head and we haven't had an audience for five years. I, I've been running it like eight shows a week in my head for five years and it's, and it's been going well, I think. So to have an audience to have an audience on Sunday was just wild. It was overwhelming. And to see the amount of love for this particular story and this particular group of people. I mean, Sierra said it, too. This cast, Richie, they are out of this world. They look out of this world. They sound out of this world. It is just, it's magnificent. And, you know, I spoke to Marsha the other day and she said, she said, my God, this thing is wick. Like you, yeah. you're you bringing this show back to life after 31 years. Here it, here it comes. And, and we all feel that. We really do. We feel just the life of it and the rebirth of it is very exciting. Okay, this is such a beloved musical. I first fell in love with this at the St. James Theatre. You know, when I was writing my questions for the two of you, it brought back so many incredible memories of the opening night with Marsha and with Lucy Simon and Rebecca Luker. I mean, I spent so much time with Rebecca as Lily during this whole time period. And I can picture us walking down the street in front of the St. James Theater one afternoon. I mean, she's someone whose face comes into my mind all the time. When were you two first, how did you originally fall in love with The Secret Garden the first time around? Was it a recording? Was it a production? Warren, I'll start with you. I mean, mine, mine was the recording. I didn't see the original production, you know. I'm a big fan of Susan Shulman. She's been a really big, influence in my life and a really good friend and mentor to me. I've worked with her. Actually, I was a choreographer and she directed something. We did that together. But, you know, my real access and my real knowledge of the show is through the through the cast album, those voices, those voices and that music. And that was really that was how I fell in love with it. And it was only later that I kind of got my I got my hands on a script and started to really um, drill a little deeper into it. But, that, but it was the music. It's the same with me, Richie. I I was introduced to Secret Garden via the music. When I was really little, I sang in this choir called the Colorado Children's Chorale, of course. And we sang Come to My Garden. And I remember that I was in the group that sang Lift Me Up. And I always wanted to be the, the group that sang Come to My Garden. And I had no idea what this is from. And then Finally, then as I grow up, I realize this is from this musical. Then I got the cassette tape. Oh. I wore it out. And then my sister gave me the CD for Christmas, I remember. And it was like one of my first CDs. And I wore it out. See, same thing with me. I did the same thing with the album. I mean, it's the same thing with all of this stuff. But it's like, okay, so this is a completely reimagined production, Warren. So... Talk about designing the show and the look and the feel you wanted to have with this. 
I mean, that's the that for me was the key, actually, was the design or the redesign of it. And Jason Sherwood is our scenic designer. And, and you know him, Richie. He's the most magnificent fellow. He has two Emmys. He won an Emmy for the Academy Awards and he, he won an Emmy for Rent Live. And he's the most astonishing theater designer. He is fantastic. And, and Jason and I, we just we met and we turned pages. And he basically five years ago designed it in five days. He was like, this is the thing, and this is the thing, and this is the thing, and this is the thing. And we just, we did it basically, you know, like, like the old days on a napkin. And then suddenly this, this beautiful, and it's, and it's funny, Richie, it's not literal. It's extremely emotional. The show is emotional. It's based on elements. It's based on earth, and it's based on fire, and it's based on air, and it's based on water. And there is these beautiful, big, bold gestures in each scene. You know, the, the sun is as big as my apartment in Manhattan. <laughs> You know, and the clock in the train station, the same thing. And there are just these beautiful, big, bold things. But the space is not a literal space, space which, which allows me to go very fast from one thing to the next. I never have to wait for transition. I actually just, we managed to just keep talking. Wow, because, yeah, you know, wonderful. It, yeah, it's all in this beautiful musical. I mean, just when you listen to it, it just comes to life in your mind, like you said. I mean, the way you describe what you put on stage has got to be absolutely amazing. So yeah, like, and we just, we just like, yesterday, we just released our very first image. We just released it yesterday. It's a really, it's a really fun one, but it speaks to, it speaks to Jason's design and the kind of elemental nature of it. It's well, let's really, talk, it's really yeah. fun. Let's talk about audiences' reaction to the show already, especially now. I mean, with everything we've gone through and, you know, the older we get to, it's interesting because I listened to the album all over again and I loved it the first time around, but I hadn't experienced a lot of death or a lot of whatever in my life. And you go back now and you listen to it and it, I, it's taken me on a whole different journey of falling in love with this show all over again. So talk about the audience's reaction now. I mean, it's interesting, Richie. It has, it has us too. I think, you know, COVID did a particular kind of thing to our, our business. And, and I think certainly my personal understanding of grief has gotten a lot deeper. The, la the last couple of years and, and age helps with that too, you know, and, and actually what we discovered this time around with the play is that every single person in this play is grieving. Mm. They're all in this. I mean, Sierra is as Lily is in these terrible. And, and what's better than the five stages of grief too, right? Anger, denial, bargaining, acceptance, and depression. I mean, Bob Fosse had a field day with that in all, in all, all that jazz, right? Those five stages. And it's, and it's very present in Secret Garden. It's very present. Each of these main characters is in a, is in a desperate state of grief. It's, and, and everyone's in a different place at a different time. It's really, but COVID has really changed how we look at this story. Yeah. And you can feel also from the stage, you can feel how much the audience has been waiting for this. So Sunday night, we've done Sunday night and Tuesday night. And you would think a Tuesday night crowd isn't going to be going crazy. They were, they wanted to clap for everything. It's like they have been, they are so hungry for this. And I think it speaks to everything of what we've just been through with the pandemic that we went through. And also where people are at in their lives, because this is a, this is a story that, you either love and you get or you don't. And the ones that it's like the ones that are here are like they've been waiting for this and they need it. Just like we need to tell this. It's a visceral reaction and we can feel it on the stage. I can feel it energetically as soon as I come on to sing my first words. Yeah. People have been bottled up. I think people have been bottled up mm -hmm. with emotions that they suppressed during the pandemic of saying, let me get through this. Let me get through this. And then to experience this through art. This is, like I said, this is the perfect musical for right now. I mean, I want to talk about Lucy Simon because we recently lost Lucy Simon, who wrote the gorgeous music to The Secret Garden. I used to love spending time with her just to be in the room with her. I used to love to go to openings and have cocktails with her and just be in her presence because she was always such a bright light. And she was so inspiring to be around. So Warren, what was it like working with her and of course, Marsha Norman on the pre-work of this show? And what did it mean to you working with Lucy personally? I, I loved Lucy. I, lo yeah. I loved her. I loved her. And Lucy, she was such an emotional, she was an emotional being. 
And she didn't really write music. She wrote emotion. That, that's how I feel about it, you know, because it's not really notes on a page. It's just these beautiful things that kind of drift. It, they ju it's just, it's astonishing. It's unlike anything I've ever heard or worked on before. And she was too. She was so beautiful and so unique and so special. And, you know, when I, when I was working with Marsha and Lucy, I said, which, which one are you? If you had to assign yourself a character in this play, who would you be? And Lucy actually said, she said, I'm Lily. I'm Lily. And here's, and here's Sierra, you know, in, embodying basically the spirit of Lucy. It's the most beautiful, it's the most beautiful thing. And Lucy was very much a part of this production. She was very much a part of the workshop, the creation of it. We've done some reordering, we've done some editing, we've changed some things, but Lucy was always, she was always a cheerleader for it. You know, she was, she was one of those people not stuck in the past, not holding on to anything. She was, she just, you know, she just used to say, go and go and go and go and do it and surprise me. And, and and I think we did. I really think we did. And her daughter, Julie Simon, has been very much a part of this particular process. Julie lives out here in L.A. Um, she's been in the rehearsal room a lot. She's been at every single preview and every single tech rehearsal, you know, and, and to watch this work get passed to another generation, you know, is really special. It's really meaningful because it means it means that Lucy lives on. She really lives on through this work. Very, very special. Because, Sierra, you had some time with them during the workshop, right? Talk about your experience of being with the creators in the room. Yeah, I mean, again, for me, because of the music and because of how I sing and because of Lucy's connection to Lily especially, she and I became really close in that workshop five years ago. And she called me her goddaughter. She adopted me. She called me her that she was my fairy godmother <laughs> and that, that Julie Simon is my sister. And it was just deemed so. And then when we do this, then we're going to be a family. <laughs> and it was like literally the secret garden actually coming to life. Um, and one of the last text that I have from her is she said I was going to ask you to carry my voice forward and so I think about that and I <laughs> I'm trying so hard all the time not to cry but that is my responsibility to her and to this piece that we love and I can't I think about it and then I go on stage and I can feel her presence grounding me like Warren talked about in life she was like this spirit she is she is Lily she's like well but it's funny on the other side of things, I feel her grounded. I feel her like pulling my feet to the ground so that I can continue floating while she's like a magnet. And that's how I feel. Um, and also another thing about Lucy was she didn't read music. And so she talked to me all the time about how she would just, she would just literally feel it. And it was how she would hear it. And a lot of the harmonies in the show are things she sung with her sister. So that really beautiful line of um, when I'm singing with my son, that was a harmony that her and her sister sang together. So it's like it really is family. It really is from her. It really is of the earth. And it really is now spirit world. I have goosebumps just from listening to this, because mm -hmm. I'll tell you, there are head people and there are heart people mm -hmm. that you meet in your life, especially in the creative field. And Lucy Simon was always one of those heart people, as you two are. I mean, I knew the first day mm -hmm. I met Sierra and the first day I met Warren, I'm a heart person. So I attract myself heart to heart. But it, it, it must be so incredible to be in the room rehearsing this show now for this incarnation full of heart and full of so much love in this room of what you've done with putting the show together. Yeah, I have to take this now because this is Warren's least favorite thing in the world. Earmuffs, just compliments. <laughs> but honestly, this production is happening because of Warren and because of his heart and because of his emotion and because of who he is. And I can't even tell you because I know him and I know his heart and I know what he does. But it's not just that he can put on a production like this. It's also how he treats everybody and how he makes it feel like a safe space for creating. And there's people off camera right now that are literally nodding their heads. Like, <laughs> it's like I'm telling you that I'm I'm not kidding. And this space has been a full creative environment. But also, you know, that's like when it's 10 a.m., he's like, all right, it's 10 a.m. It's time to go. It's his heart is there, but you don't want to mess with that because you will show up and you will do the work. <laughs> and that's that's it. And that's also with this company that he assembled. Everybody in a way that I've almost never seen 
want to do this more than anything in the world and feel so grateful to be here. And it's our leader. This is our leader. Uh, I think I think there's a reason for the title leading lady. So I would I would say back at you. Like earmuffs on, because back at you. Here <laughs> I come. Here I come. <laughs> Clearly we're working on receiving the two of us. But you know, Richie, it's a, sometimes a director choreographer, that's a lonely, that's a lonely job. That's a lonely job. There's one seat at the front of the, of the room. There's one there's one person. And in this particular endeavor, I'm not alone at all because I'm my partner is Sierra. And she always has been. This whole this whole process, this whole process has been the two of us. We've always been in it together. We've always talked about the creation of it. We've, we've always talked about the vision of it and how we were going to bring it to life. And then just, you know, I've never had an actor like this as a creative partner before it, on every, and not just the performance, you know, it's a very special partnership and, and, and has become family. I mean, truly, truly family through this process. So back at you, Sierra. Now, there's a beautiful new orchestration to this show too, right? Who yeah, get ready. Yeah. So, Danny Troub. Sorry, want to go ahead? No. <laughs> Danny Troub. I mean, you t just wait, Richie, just wait. I mean, he's done the most magnificent. I, I've worked with Danny a lot of times before and always I've been in awe of his magic. He just has this kind of sprinkly magical something. And it's 11 pieces that he orchestrated for. And it sounds like the most lush. I mean, there's a harp. There's a harp. And there's and the winds that he orchestrated for. It's not one person playing saxophone and clarinet and oboe and flute. It's it's one that flute, like many kinds of flutes, because the flute is also playing the, the bird. And then there's a separate part for the oboe. There's beautiful oboe solos. And there's it's just it's. It's exquisite. It's exquisite orchestration. Yeah, can't can't wait. And hopefully, you know, we're very hopeful of a cast album too. Just oh. to put that put that out in the universe, we're very hopeful about that. Who knows? Who knows when or where? But but I would love I would love this particular cast and these particular orchestrations to be captured because it's really it's really something. Well, it's already gone out there into the world at Broadway World. So anybody watching <laughs> around the world is going to be like, we're waiting for the cast album yeah. of the Secret <laughs> Garden. Okay. You all did such a wonderful thing during the pandemic. Talk about the film's workshop that you did and who benefited from this. This was a first. It was a, it was a first. And, you know, Richie, it was a very scary, I have to say, I've, I've never done that before. And I know the actors involved in the workshop have never done that before because, you know, we did it to benefit the Actors Fund because everyone, everyone was struggling in our industry. And we just, I wanted to do something that had never been done before. So we did. So during the workshop five years ago, by some miracle, I had it filmed on three cameras, you know, just because you want it, you want it captured. And if I'm going to work on something, it's a very helpful tool just to have something like that, to be able to look at the light cues or to be able to look at the clothes and 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 have a, a document of what it looked like. So we had this thing in the vault. And I went to Jerry Goering, the producer, and said, what if we what if we did a benefit for the Writers Guild and for the Actors Fund? And what if we got permission? And of course, to do it, we had to have 100 percent permission for, from every single actor and every single stage manager. And those phone calls, I, and I was the one making those calls, every single person without missing a beat said yes. And those actors very bravely revealed their process. I mean, that was them in rehearsal after 21 days. And and, th and then there it is. This is what we think the secret garden is. And, you know, me as a director of, of all right, so yeah. I'm not really done. I'm kind of halfway there and here's 20 days worth of work. And we're just going to put it out there and hope that it Hope that it makes some people happy. Hope that it heals some people and hope that it raises some money for two really good causes. It did all of those things. Sierra, what was it like for you, like knowing this was going to happen and you put it out there? I got excited. <laughs> yeah. I got excited because I was just like, I remember how much that production meant to all of us in that room and that it was the beginning of what now this has become and then hopefully future and future. But so I was like, yes, let's get this out there and let the world see this. And in the meantime, we can be raising money for really important things that are, which is part of what the world is that we were living in. And also I remember we talked about when this came out in our production, it starts with cholera killing everyone. And at this time with COVID and it's like this weird thing that was happening at the same time. It's like, that's how the story starts, is that this girl is abandoned because of this pandemic back then. 
So it was it was like even more eerie that mm -hmm. that it was mm -hmm. happening. Well, you helped so many people because we sat here, Preston and I sat here with Mark William. We sat here and watched it. We were like totally like crying and just feeling. And it's such a beautiful, the way you captured this, everybody was at the top of their game, just delivering these incredible performances and just being with those brick walls, you needed nothing yeah. else. It's all in this beautiful story and the score and everything else. That's and what, the, pro sorry, <laughs> that's what yeah. proves that what the yeah. what this show is you can do it like that and it's like with our production too that like Warren's saying it's emotional it's not literal and because the story holds up and the music holds up so it's i don't know that's that's what that is okay now i want sarah talk about the role of lily what you love about her so far everything like i love everything about lily first of all i love that i get to just I'm exhausted by the end of the night, not just vocally, but because you have to be present the entire time. So Warren and I talk about Lily wasn't written in most of everything. And Warren has added Lily to be witnessing a lot of things. So you'll see. So I'm present for certain songs that I've always wanted to be present for. <laughs> well, and for me, for me, Richie, you know, 90% of Sierra's role is not on the page. It's not in the script. And what we've done with this particular production is we've I've threaded her through, I've threaded her through. So you watch Sierra just haunts, she haunts every scene and you suddenly get a point of view in that scene that you didn't previously have. And you understand her connection to each of these characters and you understand her need for Mary Lennox to succeed, her need for Archie and Mary to connect. And then the fail the failures through the show that then end up in a success at the end. It's I think it's more finely tracked, but it was never never written that way. But as Sierra and I have developed this particular character, we've we've found a need for her in many 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 more scenes. And it helps tell the story. It's yeah. it's I'm responsible for the ghost side of things, mm -hmm. and it helps tell that it's like it's also been ten years that I'm stuck. And I'm stuck because Archie is holding on to me. And because my husband, who I love, and the father of my son won't let go, I can't move on. And neither can he. And so it's the frustration and the excitement for when Mary Lennox comes in. And so there's no, there's not a lot of words. But if I'm present, if I'm just, it's the energetic, like, you know, when you feel spirits just in life around you, should you be someone who does? It's an energy thing. And and it's been really fun figuring out the language of how she moves. Also, this is when we talk about Annie's costumes, the costume that was, that, that have been designed and specifically for Lily, this fabric, it's like it's, it's made, I, I, I say it's made of ghosts. It's like, if you, it's like, it's like this. That's how I can describe it. <laughs> That's wild. Yeah. Okay. Talk about singing this beautiful score. It's like sitting in the most comfortable armchair or it's like this glove that fits. It's this, it's just the way I sing. It's, it's the way I sing. And Lucy wrote this score as if it's like, this is exactly how I sing. Yeah. And so that for me helps so much that I'm not just in fear of how am I going to sing this? Um, and also the, just the energetic feeling. It's, you know, I talk about this when I talk about Phantom too, it's like the singing the high C at the end of the song, you can sing a high C and it means, and it's like, Oh, that sounds nice. But if it doesn't mean something and that's what I have a lot of ooze. Like I'm ooing, and what is what does this mean? And it helps you for any sopranos out there that are starting to like, okay, maybe Lily's a dream role. It has to everything has to mean something, or else it's just a really pretty soprano voice, you know, that goes around. And I, it's, everything is connected for me. So for me, singing the score, also getting to listen to these other actors sing the score, Julia Lester. Yeah playing Martha and hearing her do fine. I, I never understood fine white horse until she did it. Um, and John Michael Lyles uh, as Dickon. I mean, I wake up with him in my head as Dickon because he's just, it's, it's incredible. And my dearest Derek Davis, who's playing Archie. This is one of the best male voices that I've ever gotten to work with. And also one of the best humans that I have ever, ever worked with and what he's doing because it, 
it matters. My stuff doesn't matter if he isn't connected to me. And so, and it is, we are so connected and it's just like this most, it's a really joyous group of people. Now, please tell me that this production is on track to come to Broadway in New York. Yes. <laughs> yes. Confetti. Yes. Shh, shh, shh. We should have confetti guns going off now. Seriously, I mean, I have been following this whole journey. Warren knows this since he started working on The Secret Garden. I thought to myself, and we had lunch right before he left for California. And I've never seen someone more excited about a project than Warren was about getting ready to finally go out and get this thing up and running. And it's just, you know, certain things are meant to be in your careers when you, like you two working together. So mm -hmm. I want to ask you, so, you have both dedicated your lives and your careers to the theater. You have both given us so many incredible things. I have been there for all of them in New York, for both of you. They are magic moments that, you know, live in our minds and everything else. And you've touched so many people with working on, in the theater. Since you've come out of the pandemic, what does it mean to both of you to have a life in the theater and to do what you do best at the top of your game? I, I think it's more important than ever. It's so interesting. You don't realize what you have until you lose it. And that's that's how I was. I think for 20 years, I took I just took it for granted. You know, I would skip up and down 8th Avenue and go from Broadway show to Broadway show and never really gave it much thought. And the pandemic, I had two really quiet years to really reflect on that and what that was. So now every time I step into a rehearsal room, I'm I'm more grateful than I've ever been, actually. More, more grateful to be doing this work and to be doing it with the people that I'm doing it with. It's really... It's not lost on me. Yeah. Sierra. I second that. It is it's the gratitude and also life's too short to be working with people that you don't enjoy working with. <laughs> for sure. Those two things. But, you know, you two have never taken anything for granted because I've spoken to you all on opening nights or been in the rehearsal rooms with all of you. But, you know, you were creating careers for yourself, which, of course, you have to move along. And then, you know, you don't always have the time to sit back and say, wow, you know, look what I'm doing or look, you know, look at the kind of life I have and look at the kind of career I have. Because, you know, we almost lost all of this during the pandemic. We were all afraid of, I never thought that, you know, Broadway World would come back. I didn't know anything. And I, I used to walk up that street and I literally cried on 44th Street one day. I just broke down. I was walking just over mm -hmm. to 6th Avenue and walked along the avenue, you know, on 44th Street. And I just broke down saying, you know, this is what we do. This is where we work. You know, and it's not even just Broadway, it's theater anywhere in the United States or anywhere in the world that has a black box, that has a light that goes on, puts people together in a room and you make magic wherever that is. And none of us knew if it was going to come back. Yeah. Well said, Richie. Like, really, all of that. Yeah. All of that. But that's why I think The Secret Garden is so perfect for right now. I mean, you know, when Warren said he was working on this, I mean, it's about love. It's about healing. It's about forgiving. It's about letting go. And, you know, so... Finally, what do you hope audiences leave with after they leave the performance of The Secret Garden? What do you each hope they walk away with? I would, I Even mean, I would say, yeah. yeah, I would say a sense of family because that's actually what I get. That's that's what I feel when I work on it. I've, I've found my family. I've found my family in this particular story and with this particular group of actors. That That's how that feels. And that's that's what I would like the audience to feel is, the, is that wonderful sense of family. Sierra. I hope people feel nourished, nourished in their ears and their eyes and their hearts. I hope people have good cries and I hope that everybody goes and plants a garden somewhere. <laughs> I I think it's worth saying, I know I'm a hippie from Colorado, but it's this also, I, I was thinking the other day, what an amazing thing that we're doing a musical about a little girl who lost everything and all she wants more than anything in the world is to get inside that garden that's been dead. <laughs> And that's, it's like, there's a, there's a whole moment where she finds the key to the garden and it's this huge musical thing that's like, I found a key to the garden. And that's what we're like, that's this show. Like, that's really pure. That, that is pure. And um, that's, so I hope that people reflect on just what the earth does for us and how healing the earth is too. You know, it's funny, when I lost my mom a few years ago, friends of ours gave us a plant. I've never had a live plant in my house. I've had it ever since then. And the day that my mother passed away every year, a whole new green leaf comes out every single year. So, you know, 
it's it's that's the no accident. No, I know when you say about the garden and everything else, I'm like, I sit with Preston, I'm like, we're going to wake up. A whole new leaf is going to start growing today. And it does. It just, you know, so it's it's funny that you say with this show and everything else or go out and plant a garden. It's all about the earth and everything that this show stands for is really healing. Amen. Listen, I adore you both. Once again, everybody who's watching, the Center Theater Group's glorious new production of Marsha Norman and Lucy Simon's beloved musical, The Secret Garden, which has been beautifully reimagined by director-choreographer Warren Carlyle and starring Sierra Vargas, is playing at the Amundsen Theater now through March 26th. For tickets, visit centertheatergroup.org. Thank you both for joining me today here at Broadway World. Thank you, Richie. Love you. Love, love you very much. I love you both. Can I wait to see you both in New York? Yes. Everyone watching, if you're in the LA area, go and see the show. If you're anywhere else, just go to the theater. Take care, everyone. Hidden for years, its beauty returns. Step inside the mystery, the magic, the musical, the secret garden. Coming to the Amundsen Theater, February 19th through March 26th. Tickets at amundsentheater.org. Unlock the magic within.